Whoa, doesn't this look stupid? Well, these are probably the types of examples we'll be getting on the exam. So, let's get to it. I'm going to cut out for a second and draw the... Uh, uh, what do we get given? We get given the reset pulse and the clock pulse, so I'll cut out and draw those. Right, here it is, and I actually just noticed I made a mistake here. This is not B. Uh, this is B. This is technically J2, which we might be doing. Um, anyway, first things first. Uh, is this positive or negative edge triggered? Well, the answer is negative because we have inverters going into every single flip-flop. So that means that we'll have actions happening at negative edge triggers. So let's do our dotted lines. And yeah, that's right, you guessed it, that reset is not bound by the clock. If you haven't watched my previous video on timing diagrams, please do so because I talk all about things not being bound to the clock. Okay. So what a reset means is, is well, really exactly what it means. It resets everything to zero. Um, so here we actually notice that the reset is also inverted into every flip-flop. So that means that it will be an active low reset. Oops. That means that it will reset everything when it is zero. So here, reset is one, and then it goes down to zero, and goes back up to one, and then it stays one for the rest of the time. So what does that mean for us? First, we got to figure out which outputs we want to list. So obviously, we have to do A. Obviously, we have to do B and obviously we have to do C. Um, you don't have to do J2, which is here, but you can, and I will, um, just for the sake of example. It's just really helpful to kind of have it there because uh, you're anding two things. So you can do it in your head if you want, but it's uh, probably better for you to list it. Anyway, so reset here is one. We don't actually really care about that. It may as well start at zero. Um, so, you know what, I'm actually going to erase that, I think, and make it start at zero. It's a lot more simple. And where to change again? Sorry, I'm a bit disorganized. There we go, that's where it changes. Okay, so while reset is zero, everything is zero. zero that's zero and we actually have to do not q2 as well because that ends up being our inputs at the start so we're going to have some things relying on not q2 and then our j2 will be at the bottom there okay so what's interesting about not q2 is that it relies on everything else which means that it's actually going to start at one because it has to be the opposite of everything else. I'm going to cut out for a second, finish this up. All right, so since everything other than the reset relies on the clock, um, for our second clock pulse, everything's going to stay zero. Because we're looking, for the next clock pulse, we're looking just a little bit before here, where the reset is still zero, which means that it's still actively resetting everything. So A, B, and C are still zero. Not Q2 is one, and then J2 is zero. But now the reset is one, so now we're free to do stuff. Now because we had a reset, we also now have our not Q2 value, which is what A relies on at the start. So that's some good news. All right, I can't believe it's taking five minutes to really get into the meat of things. But on um, the second clock pulse here, 
This is when stuff starts to change. So let's look at Q2. Q2 is 1 until the second clock pulse. Now with A, since it relies on not Q2, and we have a JK flip-flop, I drew the truth table here, its inputs here are both going to be 1, which means it toggles right here. It toggles. So that means that A's previous value here, which is 0, gets toggled. That means A shoots up to 1 for a clock pulse. Sorry about that. There. OK, let's look at B. B relies on, whoops, I think I missed a branch in my circuit here. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. That just comes down here, like that. OK, so B relies on A. Now A right here is 0, so it's 0, 0. That means there's no change. So B keeps going. B is still 0. All right, so now we're going to shoot down to J2 because J2 is anded between A and B. And it's exactly as you would think that it's done. I know that kind of throwing gates in here th might throw you for a bit of a loop, but um, you're really just anding A and B before your clock pulse. So we look at it here, where A is 0, B is 0 here. So naturally, our AND gate will return 0. And that's good. So J2 comes in and will give us our C. So we're looking at J2, which means that C is still 0. All right, so not Q2 is, uh, is essentially the opposite of, of Q, which um, which is C. <laughs> it's a bit confusing with all these letters. Uh, so we're really just doing the opposite of C, which is still 1 because C is 0. So now let's launch back up to A. Uh, let's see what Q2 is doing here. Or not Q2, rather. So Q2 is exactly as we expected it to be. It's still 1. So that means that we have 1 and 1 going into our JK, which is a toggle. So A toggles its previous value, and we come back down. Now we're looking at B. B is going to be 1 and 1, so it will toggle as well. It toggles its previous value, which is 0, so it shoots up to 1. Alright, now let's look at C, but before that, well, yeah, we should do J2. So we AND A and B. A is actually 1 here, but B is still 0. So that means that J2 is going to stay 0 for another pulse. Now we can go back to C. So what's going into C? Our J is 0, and our previous C value is also 0. So we have 0, 0, which means that there shouldn't be any change, I suppose. So C is going to continue on. And since we're doing the opposite of C for not Q2, it will stay 1. OK, so let's shoot back up to A. Uh, looking at uh, not Q2, not Q2 is still 1, so we have 1 and 1, so we toggle again. So this is going to shoot back up. And B is looking at A. A is 0 and 0, so we have no change in B. So this is when our J2 is going to start showing some action. So now we're going down to J2, and we're ending. <coughs> Sorry, we're ending A and B which means that J2 is going to shoot up. And the reason why it shoots up right now is because A and B have already technically happened. If you're thinking it, of it as in a timeline, we go A, and then B, and then J2. 
so we don't really have to look at the previous clock pulse for J2 we can look at the one that just happened um, okay uh, so we have J2 so that means we can go to C so C has C is actually not going to change because J2 is still 0 here and C's previous value which we have to look at as well for K is also 0 so it's going to stay 0 for another clock pulse okay last clock pulse uh, we're going back up to A so A relies on not Q2, oh we forgot to do that, not Q2 stays 1 for a bit okay so <clears throat> Not Q2 is 1, so we have 1 and 1. So we're going down again. And here we have 1 and 1. So we're going down again. Okay, now for G2, we are going down. Because again, we're looking at the current clock pulse. So here, A and B go back down to zero. So we have to use zero values for J2 now. Okay, so C, C depends on J2. Sorry, I'm figuring this out as I go with you guys. Uh, so yeah, C depends on J2. We're looking at a thing before. And this one. So we end up with one, zero which means that C goes up to 1 because we have 1, 0 so Q or C is 1 okay that's good and since not Q is just the opposite of C I'm going to go down okay that's it that's our timing diagram for that complicated, stupid circuit. Uh, so I hope that helped. Um, feel free to uh, comment, subscribe, whatever. You guys know the drill. Um, happy studying.